Just talk about Ken for, for a second. He came and figured this American motocross thing out and won twice. What does he need now to try to get to that next point? I know, I know it's get healthy. He's like a son, a brother, and the fact of the matter is, no matter what we do, what science we throw at it or whatever, his body is never going to be the same. He's still dealing with some stuff. You know, that accident, he went through hell and back. He almost lost his arm. And the amount this guy invests in his health, like even that recovery, he does whatever it takes. So I hope he stays in it, not because it makes him more money or me more money. I think he's got unfinished business. Your life, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of struggle. Money and fame, do they really help? You're a world champion. You've won two outdoor motocross championships. What else do you have to prove though, Ken? I have a lot to prove. You know, the reason I signed another contract right now is because that's what I want to do. We're hungry for getting back to the very top. My goal was always to be the best in the world. That's still my goal. When you were racing, and even now, I see a lot of injuries. The love of the sport means that a lot of riders have to pay a big price. What do you think about when you see ex-professional motocross in wheelchairs? Like, what, what, what do you think about when you see it's that? It's hard. It, it's, it's really hard, and uh, it makes me feel bad. Uh, um, Sometimes it makes me feel that I'm doing the wrong, the wrong thing, you know. I think that, that even the last time I sat you down for a real interview, I don't even think you guys were a couple yet. Now we're married. That? Now we're married. Congratulations. Thank you. And then kids anytime soon? Or? Probably start next year. Yeah. We've been like, we've been practicing a lot, trying to get that dialed. <laughs> he was somebody that I was not used to. Like he, he made me laugh. He made me feel comfortable. You know, he kind of cut those edges off of my squareness to live life more free. I showed her some different parts of life. Like, I taught her how to enjoy food. She would have cereal for dinner and just re really just yeah. eat to survive. I am here to eat. Like, this is what I do, you know? What else was it? Oh, and then she was like listening to Backstreet Boys and stuff like that. No, so I kind of opened the doors to some, you know, back in the day I was into rap. So I kind of. And I showed him country. You know, I told myself when I came over here, I was like, I'm never getting married. I don't care for it. My parents weren't married. In Germany, nobody really gets married, or at least people that I know. But then with her, you know, racing and our job, and, and you know, it, it's pretty tough out there. It was nice to come home and have a shoulder to lean on, you know? And so this is what I want to do now, you know? Now we have a beautiful dog that we spoil, and I kind of just, you know, every once in a while, I still like to turn it up, and I'm still kind of crazy. Like, I like to do fun things. I'm all over the place playing golf and surfing and all that kind of stuff. But all in all, right now, I could not imagine my life being any different with anybody else, or, or alone even, or whatever. This is like what I want to do. Like, I'm pretty solid now. I think that probably for both of us, I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's more of a like, you know, we, we're starting to get pretty boring, like going to bed at 8.30 and freaking loving it. I love it. <laughs> Can you talk about Blake, what Blake means to you, to both of you guys, and explain what happened? Blake is my brother-in-law, but he's much more. He's family to me, you know? We were already starting to ride in 2015. It was like, hey, I'm going up to Santa Barbara, training with Peter. I need a training partner. Let's go through this misery together, you know? Like, I have to learn everything from scratch, you know? And so did he. So from there, the kind of the journey started. He decided to, hey, I'm gonna, I really like enjoy lifting. I, I like working out. I like the science behind it. He started to pursue his dream of being a trainer. You know, sure enough, we, we went through this year together, 2016, he was by my side every step of the whole deal. And we've been working together ever since. And this year, we were up in St. George, Utah, and went to go ride in Mesquite. Blake is still a really good rider. He can get around a supercross track, no problem. I was doing my motors and whatever, and he was just gonna cruise around and uh, ride with me and, and just have some fun. Something just went wrong, and he came up short on a little like rhythm section triple. I came around and I saw him laying there and, you know, big crash, bikes, you know, totally elsewhere. Dumped my bike right away, went up to him and took his goggles off and 
he was laying there very oddly, like, you know, he could tell that he was either knocked out at that point or, and I couldn't really see his arm, like his arm, you know, he was laying there and it was kind of like sideways and I couldn't really see his arm. It, it looked like it was completely folded behind his body. We, I was like, hey, like, what's, what's going on? Like, are you okay? He wasn't screaming or anything and, and he wasn't necessarily in a whole lot of pain, but um, I'm like, can you feel everything? He's like, no. And, and I was like, what do you mean no? Like, can you, can, you, can you feel anything? He's like, dude, I can't, like, I can't feel my legs right now. And I'm like, okay, okay. We were pinching his legs and whatever, and we were like, dude, we gotta call an ambulance. I had to call a court. I was freaking out, didn't wanna do the call. I didn't know how she would react, you know, and I get emotional, I'm like, dude, what the, what the frick do I do? Courtney turned around and looked at me, and she literally turned white. She said, Mom, grab your stuff, Blake's been hurt. It was something that I never thought our family or would ever want to see anybody's family faced with. It was bad. We were all hoping that it was just, you know, sometimes you have like these shock things that happen, maybe a little compressed spinal cord, whatever, and it comes back, but he ended up breaking his neck and we were with him in the hospital for a long time. It was, it was some, there's some tough times there, that's for sure, but through this entire process, he's been nothing but a freaking animal, you know? There's been times where I've felt like, you know, why did this happen to me? Why that day? Why that time and track? It's definitely gone through my mind. Blake's not one to ask for help, but he, he's had to. The last time we filmed Ken working out in Florida, you were there, able-bodied, hands-on. How do you still work with your riders? I do my job through, through email, through text, through call, but it's still tough. I'm super passionate about my job. I love being there for those guys and to have to do it the way I am right now is very difficult every single day. It's not the same as being there in person with them and watching their workouts and being on the bike rides with them and watching their motos. Let's release the right. There it goes. Nice job releasing. Good job keeping the left straight. Now we're gonna release the left. Excellent. Keep that right straight. Nice job. We're gonna push that left back up. There's a lot of people that they just give up. You know, they say, hey, life gets in the way. Well, through our discussions in our family, nothing gets in the way. It won't. We're here to support him. The motorcycle, this this bastard machine on two wheels that has brought <laughs> so much joy. Yeah and so much pain yeah. to the Savage family. What do you think about the motorcycle now? To be honest, I was never in love with him. I could care if Blake raced or not, but I knew he loved it. And if he enjoyed it and he loved it, then whatever it took for Greg and I to keep him riding motorcycles, to make his dreams come true, even if it was just to win a race. It's, a, it's an amazing way to go out and have fun with your family, enjoy freedom make stories, um, and that's what we've done the whole time. So absolutely not, motorcycles are the best thing in the world. I mean, I haven't taken any of my memorabilia or posters down in my garage. I mean, how can you get rid of that? Once you have that in your blood, it'll never go away. I love motorcycles. Still. Still, I always will. Nice yeah. job, Blake. There you go. Great. It's not common for someone to continue working with someone with spinal cord injury, you know, this far out. Uh, it's generally considered the first three months you're going to get what you're going to get. But Blake is now 
past that quite a ways, six plus months, and he's still showing improvements. And, and that's improvement is just, you know, keeping me inspired. At that point, I was meditating in the morning, start off the day and whatever, and I could not shake the image of him laying there the way he did, like motionless. It really messed with me a lot. People came up to me on race day, like asking about it, and I turned away immediately. I said, I don't want to talk about it because I told, even told Court, and I, that is not supposed to sound selfish whatsoever, but I'm like, when we are at the races, I don't want to talk about it because that's a, you know, it's, it's gnarly. It's freaking gnarly. Like, what do you do? I got to go out and race. Our front runners now back to the top of the hill, and here comes Kenny Roxon. He's going to get a big old handle of throttle. He's got it! And he went to the number one ride. It looks like Roxon sealed the deal. He's leading all riders here at the 51st running of this motocross classic. It gives me goosebumps, to be honest. Every time I see him out leading races and winning races, I always have this picture in the back of my head of seeing him you know, through his lowest times, being able to rise to the top from that is also giving me motivation to just never give up. His thought process, for him, there was nothing else but making 100% recovery. And that is so important when it comes to injuries. I don't care about the doctors and what they say because there is always a chance that you can recover better than what they say. Whether you want to call it miracle, but they have happened, and why not be one of them?